Let's talk subwoofer design. I'm sure many of you have built your own enclosures, be it a closed or vented box, or maybe some other design. In this video I will try to explain my process, uh, how I calculate the sixth order subwoofer box. In this case it will be a parallel tuned with uh, two 15 inch speakers inside. Uh, so the plan is simple. It's simple. We uh, kill the Batman. <laughs> uh, we estimate the available space for the box. Then we should declare the intended purpose for the build and then we can start to pick the speakers and amplifiers that fit the best for the goal. After that we can start to think about the chamber configuration and port tuning. This will be a lengthy juggle, for sure, uh, between part and chamber volumes to get the best result. When that is done and revisited many times, a prototype box will be built where the port tuning will be measured in real life and changed if needed. And when that is done, the subwoofer will be ready for work. The first step was to measure the available space in my Volvo. It came out to be around 370 liters, which should be enough for two 15-inch speakers. I did not allow myself to do any cutting or dismantling of the car, and it is still my daily driver, so sometimes I will need to use the whole trunk to transport some large cargo. This means that the sub box should be removable. It will be a two-man job for sure, as the box will be quite heavy when finished, but, uh, but this has to be taken into consideration. I am planning to use the Ground Zero 15-inch speakers, uh, as I have one of these in my current sub subwoofer box, and it performs as expected. I have no problems with it. The speaker has good power handling at the, pri at the price that it has. I will be powering the subwoofers with the uh, Daramps Smart 3 amplifier, which is capable of outputting uh, over 3000 watts RMS at 2 ohm load. The nominal power handling for the subs combined will be around 2400 to 3000 watts, so the speakers will match the amp well. As most of you know, no subwoofer box is ideal. Some compromises have to be done all the time, so some design goals should be formulated. Uh, for this design, uh, it will be a parallel tuned sixth order bandpass box. I chose parallel configuration over the series mainly because of the higher efficiency and the higher desired tuning. I want the box to be loud and punchy, not a low-end uh, wind machine. At the same time, ideally I expect for the box to play down to 30 Hz at minus 3 B and kick my guts at uh, 65 Hz. When not in car, the subwoofer should handle some electronic music in a PA application uh, when I decide to make a private party at my workshop. The approximate chamber proportion will be 2.5 to 1, where the 2.5 parts go to the uh, front chamber and one part goes to the rear. I will have to be creative with the baffle placement because of the depth of the Volvo chunk does not allow to place two 15 inch drivers next to each other. Also a lot of bracing will be used to tighten the box and avoid losing acoustic energy to enclosure vibrations. I will try to add some polyfill to the front chamber to artificially gain some internal volume. After some tinkering in spreadsheet, I made a simple model for volume calculation. This allows me to make small change very efficiently, along, allowing me to keep an eye on the overall volumes for the chambers. I took some time to include all the volumes for the braces that will be used to be more realistic, realistic about the calculations. I settled for the following volumes. The rear chamber would be 
104 liters and front chamber will be 201 liters which I'm hoping to increase to 260 liters after adding the polyfill. In calculations I assume the gain from the filling to be around 30% but I will check this after the prototype box is ready. Here you can see the response that I am aiming for. The passband should be from th around 32 Hz to uh, 85 Hz at upper level at minus 3 dB from the peaks. The peak at 70 Hz should be less prominent when the sub will be used in the car because of the cabin gain. The group delay for the subwoofer can be seen here. At the kick area the delay is somewhere around uh, 16 to 20 milliseconds. As this box probably will be used as a solo sub, I am not that concerned about the phase issues caused by the delay. Maybe someone has something to add this graph below in the comment section. Using the link width transformation, it is possible to est estimate the maximum SPL that you could achieve in this car. This of course is all on paper, but the uh, 150 dB pressure level sounds nice. I will have to verify this after the box is ready. Link for the forum entry that talks about the transformation parameters is linked below. This graph shows the strong side of the higher order designs. As you can see the box has good cone control and the excursion does not exceed the uh, X max of 45 mm when applying uh, 2400 watts. The only filter I used here is the high pass that should be used on all vented boxes to protect the speaker from subsonic frequencies. The bass boost option for the Taram Smart 3 will be used here as well. This can help to get more output from the subwoofer while not mechanically damaging the speaker. This however comes with some risk. Precise frequency for the bass boost should be verified after some real-world measurements. Also note that in this example, when playing 32 Hz at uh, 2400 watts, the coil moves very little, which could overheat the windings. As the cone does not move that much, the ventilation also does not work that well. Here you can see that both ports have rather high air velocity in them. This is one of the major compromises made in this design because I want to maintain the chamber volume as big as possible for wider frequency response. Usually the air velocity should be kept to around 5% from speed of sound which comes to be around 60 meters per second. I have read some sources where 35 meters per second is allowed but still the uh, over 50 meters a second that I'm getting seems to be a bit much and uh, could cause some chuffing and distortion at higher SPLs. But in my experience with WinISD, the real life air speed seems to be much lower than predicted in software. I will take the risk and rely on some corner rounding and slight flaring to minimize the possibility of turbulences in ports. This, however, will be diagnosed in the prototype box and I will be following up on this. A crazy idea, but uh, if all else fails, I'm considering making the internal walls of the box ports dimpled like a golf ball. I have read some forum posts where guys talk about this, but have not seen anyone actually do this. What do you think? Is this a crazy idea or not? So from here the only thing left is to buy some plywood and start building. The box will have the final external dimensions, baffle and internal bracing. But the ports will be temporary and removable for tuning. This also means that the top part of the box probably will not be glued to ensure proper access to the box internals. One slight problem is that I do not have the speakers or amplifiers yet. I want to use two new speakers to ensure that the both of them are broken in in the same time and would give the right response results. Just wanted to mention my previous build where I'm using a single 15 inch speaker. 
It has served me for a year now with no complaints. This also is a sixth order parallel tuned box design. I had a great time figuring out all the small and not so small issues I got when making this box. The build video can be found below in the video description. And uh, finally, if I helped you in any way, please consider supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. This really helps me to continue the work I do and funds the hardware I use in these builds. A sincere big thank you goes out to my longtime supporter Brian. He is a great help for this channel and uh, I wish him all the best. Thank you.